Imagine that you're infinite consciousness. All right? You're everything. There isn't anything that isn't you or could not be you. Right? One of your most prized creations would be um, a place where you could experience the illusion of being separate from yourself. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are still in Los Angeles, California. We are now on the gorgeous Venice boardwalk. We are going to be talking to David Alexander English about all things related to life, his art, and the way he communicates the inventory of his mind out to civilization. <laughs> I'm super excited to have this conversation. Thanks for joining us on the show. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> <laughs> Huge shout out to Jason Pinsky for introducing us. Definitely. Much love. Pinsky! Pinsky! 20 dwarfs, 20 dwarfs, 20 dwarfs, 20 dwarfs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so David, who the hell are you? Good question. So, uh, you want to hear the story of my name? Yeah. Okay. So there was this woman named Avis Bean, who my mother knew as Aunt Avis. She was my mother's great uncle's girlfriend during the Depression, and they all lived in the same house when she was a little kid. Avis was in a coma in the hospital and wasn't expected to live. And so my mother and grandmother went to see her. My grandmother's standing there in the doorway talking to the nurse, and uh, my grandmother. And uh, my mother walks up to the bed, and she puts her hand on Avis's hand. And Avis comes out of the coma, sits up in bed, and she says, hello, Mitzi. Um, which is my mother's nickname when she was a little kid. She said, uh, you're pregnant, you're gonna have a son, and his name's gonna be David Alexander. She went back into the coma, and a few months later, she died. So, growing up, I heard this story a lot. And so, in, in a way, it was kind of like in the background of a walking meditation. Um, to cut to the chase, it's like, when it's hard to be anything other than, you know, working towards being a, a significant player on the planet, when, you know, somebody has prophesied you're coming. <laughs> you know, when you feel like, uh, no matter where you are, no matter what's happening, it's like, okay, so I've got I've to make something happen. I've got to do something with this. You know, I can't just be a dishwasher. I can't just be a taxi cab driver. But if I am being a taxi cab driver and a dishwasher, um, there's something here for me to learn. There's something in this moment. The universe has brought me to this moment for a reason, you know? So it's like, you know, how do I harvest that? So. Who the heck is David Alexander English? That's, uh, I guess we'll know when it's over, right? <laughs> Seriously. In the meantime, um, it's all about, you know, creating as much work as I can, creating as much of, of the work that I've, you know those moments when you feel like, this is why I was born. This is why I came here, right? Um, as, met, as many of those moments as I can possibly create. You know, and the more time you spend in that zone of, you know, I, I can't wait to create this thing. I can't wait to, you know, get to, what am I, what do I get to do today? Oh, okay, I get to paint this painting. I get to write this novel. I get to make this movie. I get to fly this plane or just stand here and just like dig on the fact that there's a freaking plane in the air. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That, I mean, I love seagulls. I can just love seagulls. I can, I can appreciate the infinitude of, of my and everyone else's being um, anytime I choose. I can marvel. I can be in wonder, right? Whatever's coming at me, I, I have a choice. You know, I, I can choose to, you know, take it anywhere I want because we all have spiritual sovereignty. 
no matter whether we want to abrogate that or not, no matter whether we want to surrender that to somebody else or not. So, who am I? It's like the blossoming. What, it, it, take a snapshot, all right? Even this moment, I mean, this is just, this is right now, it's cool, it's cool, it's yummy. It's friggin' yummy. It's magnificent! <laughs> but, but then, um, it's, what's the context? Do you need the context? You're gonna learn something either way. If you're, you know, those that have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, right? So, whoever's watching this, is there's an agreement that was made before we chose to come into this world that uh, there would be a moment of possibility, of, of inspiration, of, of uh, self-initiation, right? And honestly, I get, I feel totally empowered and totally nourished when I, I know that I've inspired people. You know, to, to remember who they really are and, and that we're all infinite and immortal beings, right? So, you got another question? You want me to keep going? Yeah. What? <laughs> all right, well, there's a lot of good stuff that you brought there. I like the, you gotta do what, it's good, like you gotta do what you love every single moment of life and, and you gotta think about what the realization is, is the educational lesson that you're getting in every single one of those moments whether you are doing something that may you may think is mundane or ecstatic or sad or whatever it may be it's all a lesson mm -hmm. in this growth that we have it's there were a fertilizer. lot of good things it's all fertilizer yeah that's yeah, the way I put it's it it's all fertilizer um, we have a choice you know to pay attention or not w one thing that we one thing that we do say is that one's faculties need to be trained to see things as everything is fertilizer. The children need to be trained to know that. Not, not really. Not trained. Okay. You know? Once again, we're infinite and immortal beings, right? So we, we all have chosen to be here. You know, to, to take part in this unfolding. In this remembrance. In this reawakening. Right? And nobody needs to be trained unless they, that they've chosen to be trained. We need to remember though. Exactly. But don't we need assistance remembering from other some people? Some people do and some people don't. Yeah. Right? I mean, when and you- And what are we remembering exactly? We're remembering our what? In, uh, infinitude, our immortal nature, our truest self. How are we and immortal? Our, and our reason and for, for choosing to be born. Our reason, okay, how, what is our reason for choosing to be born and how are we immortal? Exactly. Well, how, oh, you, so so that's what you're it, supposed to remember. It's different for every person, right? Okay, so so I am born with an intention to manifest some sort of uh, destiny on the planet yeah. of 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 hopefully creating some sort of benevolent value to the system of Earth. Right. Right. And each one of us has a different totally. intent that we landed here on Earth with. Right. And we have to remember what that intent was. And some people don't. Some people come with no intent. No, some people don't, don't remember. need to remember. Because they came here for what? They came here for whatever their reason was, but, the, but to know, to realize and remember would be antithetical, anti-productive to the, like, like, it's like, you know those times in your life when you're like, I really want to know universe, and you don't, you don't, there's like crickets, you don't hear anything, you don't get the information that you're asking, right? One of the reasons why that is, I, you know, from my experience, is that to know the answer to that question might be um, counterproductive to you actually doing what it is that you came here to do. Interesting. Yeah. So um, you have to remain in the discovery mindset. If that's what your mission is, right? There are loads of people, like 90% of the people on the planet, they're not in discovery. They're not in, that's not their thing. That's not what they're here to do. You know, they're here to, to fully immerse in the experience, in the illusion of being separate from the one. They're here to immerse Ex themselves in the separation. In the illusion, the illusion of, of se being separate, separate from, from, the from the source, one. From the source of and the one. And that's their lesson. Uh, yeah. 
I wouldn't say it's their lesson. I, I'd say for some people it's their lesson, but for some people, it you know, it, it's for them to say what it what it's for and what it is. And okay, but every person comes here before they get here. They they uh, they sit down with a uh, kind of a, a group of superconscious beingness, right? Their own higher self. And there are there are certain aspects of, of the universe that present themselves as superconscious beings, who their sole job is to remember what this whole soul group, every every life path of every member of this of this whole soul group, all 7.8 billion souls of us, is doing. What what your mission is, and or what the mission is that you've chosen for this incarnation, and to weave whatever that mission is into um, the the highest good. Right, the, the the agenda of the highest good, so that no matter what it looks like on the surface as a mortal person to infinite consciousness, it all makes perfect sense. Not only does it make perfect sense, it already knows what what all the possibilities are. It knows what you were going to do before you were, you know, you, you entered the realms of density. Right, the realms of density are, you know, the physical realm, the the um, etheric realm, the astral realm, the causal plane, right? And, and those places that are more dense than the physical realm. Um, we all come from beyond all that. That's a super conscious, a place of super consciousness. Totally. A higher self place. Right. Okay. I try not to say higher self because it's, you know, it, higher is relative to what? To what, yeah. You yeah. know? But and we it, come in through when, this when physical and it's form. misleading because it's 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 actually it's all within you, you know that whole the, the kingdom of God is within you. It's all it's all within. It's all within. Yeah, within, you know. So so as you said, nine of ten you think are here to experience the illusion it, of the separation. Right to be totally thoroughly immersed. In, in that the illusion, self, yeah. In the illusion, yeah. And the reason is because the source of the one—that's its agenda. It's to experience the illusion of being separate from itself. That's the source. Okay. The source of the one. The source of infinite consciousness. The source of, of infinite love. Okay. It's its agenda. Because okay. So let let's take a step back. Because that's the learning. That's how you learn. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Hold up. Imagine that you're infinite consciousness. All right? You're everything. There isn't anything that isn't you or could not be you. All right? One of your most prized creations would be um, a place where you could experience the illusion of being separate from yourself to the point where you would savor those things that helped you remain in that illusion for as long as possible because, let's face it, as long as possible is still just a blip in your infinitude, right? To the point where you would savor those things like fear, doubt, anger, confusion, you know, all that stuff. Pride, uh, greed, all those things. Because they, energetically, they're, they're, those are energetic structures that, it, it, you know, keep you in the illusion of being separate from you when you're everything. You're the sky, you're the earth, you're the love, you know, you're all the dimensions, you're everything, right? You are the creation and beyond the creation. There isn't anything in the creation or beyond the creation that isn't you, right? So what's the first thing that happens when a person gets born? They forget everything. You forget who you are. And you spend a good slice of your life trying to remember who the heck you really are. Probably 30 years. Yeah, easily, easily. Yeah. And most people never remember who they really are. Like 99.99999% of the population never remembers who they really are. Because most people, they use the term soul, recognizing that a soul is immortal intellectually, but they don't recognize, we, we don't usually recognize that, that we're immortal. Right, that this is our spacesuit. You know, this is a spaceship. How are we immortal? You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. 
All right. Yeah, you do. I mean, if I was to hypothesize, maybe this, when this flesh vehicle spacesuit ends, the heart last heartbeat goes, that maybe that I revisit another spa spacesuit. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if that's what you, you know, that's if that's your mission, right? But let's, let, before you leave the body, I mean, before you leave the, the planet for good, all right? Every day, every person on this planet leaves their body. Every day, for, every day. for dreams? Dreams, but also in trance, in thought. Um, you know what's faster than the speed of light? <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> Consciousness, right? So it takes uh, 26,000 years for light to get from the center of the Milky Way galaxy to your nose, right? And if I say the center of the Milky Way galaxy, you're there in your mind. Boom, instantly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. this is the metaphysics. The, the word metaphysics, a lot of people, when they hear that word, they're like, huh, what, what? Because it, it's a big word, you know, there's more letters in it than most people use in their regular vocabulary and everything like that, but let's break it down, right? Meta is Greek for beyond. Physical, as in the physical plane of existence. Beyond the physical plane of existence, right? So what's beyond the physical plane of existence? Us. What? Us. Consciousness. Right? Our dreams, our, our emotions, you know, our aspirations, our, our thought forms. You know, one of the things you learn in, 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 in metaphysics, in studying metaphysics, is that, that thoughts are real things. Thought is energy. You know, energy is vibration. Everything in the physical universe is vibration. You know, the flower of life is the, is the, a standing wave, the, the standing wave of energy that is the physical universe, right? Everything in the physical universe is in the flower of life pattern, right? The, the flower of life is uh, the electromagnetic field of the universe, right? Of the physical universe. This is what some of your art yeah. is about. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell us about this, the flower of life. The electromagnetic yeah. <laughs> field of the universe. Tell us about right. this. So, so the, everybody knows the Star of David, right? The Star of David is shorthand for the flower of life. All right? It's a star tetrahedron. It's three-dimensional, three so it's a star tetrahedron. And the star tetrahedron, you know, it's up, upward-facing uh, tetrahedron and a downward-facing tetrahedron, all right? Um, so every line in the in the tetrahedron is um, essentially take a step back. Um, basic principle of physics is a moving electrical field creates a magnetic field and vice versa, right? So as an electron moves from point A to point B, it warps the ambient field around it into a magnetic field, right? So if you picture a tetrahedron with four, you know, there's four corners and four. Uh, lines running between them all, right? Um, those four lines are the electron moving around, right? And each one of those lines has, if we're going to draw it in two dimensions, it has two curved lines on either side of it, right? The two curved lines are the magnetic field, the straight line is the electrical field, right? The flower of life is made of basically two spheres of star tetrahedrons interfacing with one another. A lot. <laughs> Electromagnetically, you know, all these electrons moving around, but they all have, they all do the same thing, which is they create a magnetic field as they move, right? So there's one of these around you, around every one of your cells every one of your molecules, every one of your subatomic particles. There's one of these around the Earth, around the solar system, and so forth. An electromagnetic field yeah. around every subatomic particle. And we call it, we call it the, the flower of life. 
because the pattern is everywhere. There isn't anything that can exist in the physical universe unless it's that. It's the, it's the way the universe vibrates. It's energy. And it's conscious. It's infinite consciousness. So the physical plane is infinite consciousness. Everything is, is infinite, infinite consciousness. consciousness. There isn't anything. And that the physical isn't plane is all in the flower of life. All in the yeah. electromagnetic. It all looks in a flower. Yeah, of it's life. a fractal. It's a fractal. Right within every one of those spheres. Spheres is a fractal. the whole pattern repeats to infinity, infinitely in and infinitely out. I see your your mind is melting down, my friend. Got <laughs> <laughs> to chew on that, like. Yeah, there's there's a lot to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's a lot you're to remember. you're getting like I don't know, I'm 61. You're getting 61 26. years worth of stuff in yeah, like yeah. what? 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. But uh, what led you to these realizations? A combination of this is what I chose to be born to do. And this is what I've chosen to pay attention to, you know? I mean, there's our original, you know, plan that we came into this life to accomplish um, is, is always up for editing, right? Like, we, we, we have sovereignty. We can change it at any time. You know, you can, you can walk down the path or you can take a left or right or whatever you want you know you can remember how to fly and not even deal with the path right so I, I've chosen to pay attention right and one of the reasons I did that is because to not pay attention was painful agreed yeah do other people know that there is uh, something to pay attention to I think you uh, you know the answer to that question. Well, is what's the answer? Everybody does. Everyone everybody knows? knows that. Everybody knows that on some level. To pay attention, whether everybody, it be just a little bit or a lot, and then we make every, the left or right decisions on right, whether to pay attention right, or not. Right. For some some people, like I said, it's not. And they become our habits, is what. Um, enlightenment not. is not for every soul in every lifetime. It's not every, every soul's mission in every lifetime <clears throat> to become enlightened, to manifest enlightenment. Because frankly, everybody's already enlightened. We come from the light. We are the light, right? We've come into this creation to experience, you know, something else that we create. We're creating, we're creating this, we're creating, you know, we've created all this. There's an aspect I, I like to say that there's like there's like four main kind of people, right? There's the folks, the, the souls that help the universe create this. Create what? The universe. Okay. All right. The folks that help the universe be created. Yeah, they help the the, the source of the one create the the realms of density. That sounds like an exciting job. Doesn't it? That's what they thought. A and universe once designer. They, once they once they created it. That's what we all are. That's what we all do. We all have that capacity. We create universes, right? So most of us do it in a, in, on the small scale. We do it in our heads. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's the same, same thing. We, a lot of people, you know, you, you build a house, you know, you fill it with all your stuff and you, you go to your job and I mean, that's your little universe, right? Everybody's got one, whether it's a, a, a bedroll or a, a, a mansion, right? But what I'm talking about is, in the beginning, there was, you know, this group of people, group of souls that, that decided to create this. What's the beginning? It's an illusion. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just, for the sake of okay. the conversation, I'm, I'm saying, okay. So there are these folks. A group of souls. A group of souls. Well, who are these? They were, we they are us. They're us. They are we. It's, we, it's all, it's consciousness. We're, everybody's everybody. Everybody is everybody. Because remember, there's just one. There's just We're one. all one, right? So different aspects of divinity decided to create something. 
right? And they created this and they created that and they created the other thing and then one day they created the day, right? They created the universe. They created the realms of density, the, the, you know, those planes that I mentioned before, right? And they kept creating, 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 and, they, and what was really cool in this game in the playground of, 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 all, of all that is, was that they could, the more they created, the more fun they were having, and the, what, what do kids love to do during recess? Pretend, right? So they, they went into their playground and they, everybody's, I'll, I'll be this and you be that and we'll pretend that we're this and that and, that and and the best part about pretending is when you totally thoroughly forget everything else except the game, right? So they got, you know, deep into their thing, into their creation, and then uh, some of them got stuck in there and forgot completely who they really are and where they really came from, right? So, um, but once this thing was created, there were other aspects of divinity that, that, that realized that, hey, there's this really cool place to go. Let's go in there and see what it's all about. So they came in here and they, you know, they're, those are mostly the tourists, you know, they're, they're, they're just here because it's fun. It was already, they didn't create it, but they came to visit and they, you know, got caught up inside and, you know, believing and believing and believing in it, right? And then there's, uh, there's these other folks that got invited to come in to this construct and uh, remind those around them of who they really are and where they really came from and, you know, to help, you know, anybody that really wants to not actually be in here anymore to, like, leave. That's kind of what I feel like my role is. I figured. You can, you can tell who those folks are because uh, they're usually the ones that are in service, right? They're spiritual service, they're trying to make the world a better place and trying to help people and it's, it's your natural proclivity is to try to, and that's most of the people that are watching this, that's your audience, you know, people that, are, that, are, that want to do some good, you know, they'd rather do good than do anything else. Right? How can I help? Right? Then there's this, this other group of people, and everybody knows this group of people, at least one of them, right, in your lifetime. And their mission is to explore the darkness, right? Explore the boundaries of the creation, right? And those folks, they are fulfilling the prime directive of the source of the one, which is to experience the illusion of being separate from itself as much as possible, for as, you know, to go as far and deep into the darkness as you possibly can, Damn. right? And we all know those folks. We, you know, we try to help them. They're like, wake up, no, come back, no. You know, but that's their thing. That's what they're there for, because on some level, the universe, the source of the universe knows that we cannot be harmed and we can do no harm because this is an illusion. You know, if you're invested in, in the physicality of things, that just, just doesn't stand with you. You know, it's like, no, I'm going to save you. You know, <laughs> when, when the universe knows they have an agreement, you know, in, in Native American uh, spirituality, they under, they under, there, there are certain roles, you know, there's a hayoka. Right, and the sacred clowns, and the contrary. What are those? They're the contrary, you know, the, the sacred clown. Um, they're uh, what would, you, you know, I guess you would call them medicine people that, that uh, provide a service of reminding you know, it's a, it's kind, kind of the, 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 the shaman, yeah, okay? Yeah. It's to be the mirror. You know, if everybody's going right, they go left. You know, if you go to a, if you go to a Sundance, right? Like everybody is wearing uh, uh, red uh, and white, and they're wearing black and green. Everybody's going clockwise. They go counterclockwise. You know, Sounds everybody a lot like me everybody too. gets pierced in the front. They get pierced in the back. 
You know what I mean? It's a it's a recognized it's recognized like nonconformist. Right. And also healing. Right. So I- I- example. Okay. So I'm at this this Sundance at Big Mountain twenty years ago, and and there is a there is a um, a Hayoka who has um, he's been you can tell when a when a man takes when a when a Hayoka takes off his shirt, man or woman, right? And they've they, they, a sun dancer. You can just see the piercings, layers and layers of piercings, right, front and back, right. And so everybody at, at the Sundance, there's all this um, attention to detail. Like if somebody were to drop a, a, an eagle feather, they would stop the whole ceremony. You know, so there's like a, this intense respect because it's you know it's a four-day prayer. For not for oneself, but for the world, for humanity, for your yeah, your yeah. community. It's for somebody else yeah. that you're doing the dance, right? And and so you know, from from sunrise to sunset, people are, are you know piercing and they're they're attached to the arbor and they're dancing and everything like that. So this Hayoka, you know, goes out into the into the sacred space, and he's got a can of soda. And he's got a, an electric fan, and he's just like, ah, oh, man, you know, just being profane, right? But in the, at the same time he's doing that, he's checking on the dancers, you know? He's, he's entering um, the notion of, of, of light, of being lighter, of lightening up. Of humor, the sacred clown. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah. So that's the that percentage of people. Their their job is to go into the darkness. What about the other ones? What are the What are the rest? Is it just light and the dark? The majority of people, like I said, are tourists. Are tourists. <laughs> yeah, and they, the, and they're the, just they're we're just here to play. We're here to immerse ourselves in this construct as thoroughly as we possibly At, of can. Of the illusion of the Be, separation of the being separate of the from the one, yeah. of the source of the one. Separate yeah. from the one. Yeah. So majority of people are tourists in that experience, yeah. and then some are in the deep malevolence. The well, deep, I wouldn't say malevolence. Uh, the deep, sorry. The, the deep, darkness, yeah. The deep darkness. Yeah, they're exploring, the, everybody's exploring the darkness, because yeah, all of yeah. this is just, it's beyond the realm, what I would call, what I, what I tend to call the ultimate reality, which is beyond the realms of density where we all come from, you know, in the realms of and infinite do we consciousness. we know about that? How do we know about this infinite consciousness place? <laughs> <laughs> how do we know about it? Yeah. By paying attention. How do, we, how do we pay attention to understand that we came from there? It's a walking meditation, bro. Right? Okay. It's a choice. Pay attention. You know, when you go into the wilderness and drop into stillness, whether you're just, you know, sitting in your car or you're literally in the desert or out in the jungle or the forest or sitting on top of that mountain over there, right? When you drop into that, you open up a place for communion to take place, for a divine communion. You, you say, I'm ready. Yeah. Let's have a, let, I'm, you, I, you have my undivided attention. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's up? Yeah. Right? So imagine if you go into that space without wanting anything, without needing anything, but choosing communion. Right? So in 1993-94, I went into the desert about 100 miles east of here. Um, drove out there with a, my Volkswagen bus. I had a bag of rice and uh, a roll of canvas and just intending to have, you know, paint my brains out and have a conversation with the universe. Right? And within three to five days, I started to have this experience of euphoria. And this euphoria lasted, ended up lasting for like three months, 24 hours a day. And, and no, no drugs, just paint and... No, the, the first two weeks, no drugs at all. Then on New Year's Eve, um, I was given a hit of acid. Psychedelics, yeah. And I... You know, I tripped and I, I, I couldn't wait for it to be over so I could get back to being high. 
right? And then the on next life, day- On life, on flow. On the, the flow, on what I was on experiencing. The art, the painting your brains out. On being, on being. On just being. Yeah, I would just, I would just walk out into the desert. Because this world is enough. This world is just beautiful enough to be in ecstasy all the time. Well, there's that, but it wasn't just this world. I mean, I, I would walk out into the desert and I would just, you know, stand there and, and then all this information would start to come. Just this like profusion of just yumminess, the feeling of, of grace and blessing, blessedness and um, that which can't not be named, right? And next thing I know, I, I realize that I've been standing there for like 20 minutes, a half an hour or so, you know, just like totally gorging myself on this feast of the feeling and all the information and everything. And, you know, I love information. I love knowledge. I love uh, consciousness, right? And I was, I was in communion Honestly. with the source of the one. Yeah. Right? And so- It feels like that going really deep into meditation or deep into psychedelics, that that's what it feels like, a deep communion with the one. Right. That's exactly what it feels like right. in many ways. So, so let, that let is me, one of the ways for for people that are trying to to help others commune is to is to get that tapping into the interconnectedness of the one, right, right, and right. that the the self is the illusion that the there is no the the oneness is everything. Yeah, um, I want to make I want to finish something and make sure. something really clear. I have some questions, more um, questions. Okay, yeah. so the the next day. Um, I had some friends that, that came into the desert and they, they wanted me to smoke this pot and I was like, I'm, I'm good. But the universe said, no, smoke the pot. I was like, really? I just want to be, you know, no, no, go ahead. So I smoked the pot and I went out into the desert and I, once again, I couldn't wait for it to be over so I could get back to being high. And I asked the universe, I was like, why did you have me do this? Yeah. And the answer was, so that I would know that the similarities and differences from, what, from the natural high that I was experiencing to these, you know, these substances that most people use, either, you know, acid and I think about and, using uh, drugs in a very similar way to, to know the real difference in the feelings of being high on life versus high on the drug. Right, well, it's very, it's really simple. The, 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 these substances, they, they can only do for you what you can do for yourself. Like they literally only stimulate what's already inside of you to secrete. The, the problem is that they, they modify that secretion, right? So like, like acid and, and, and mushrooms and all that kind of stuff, they all stimulate this crystal palace series of glands to secrete their natural, you know, you know serotonin, melatonin, endorphins, all this kind of stuff, right? But because you have, you've taken those drugs, you, they, like, like ecstasy, I never, I've never done ecstasy, but, but I'm, I'm told that it, it, it stimulates the pineal gland to, to release all of the serotonin and all the melatonin within it all at once, okay? And that's why people that, after, the, after they've done it, they, a lot of people don't, you know, for a couple of days after, they don't dream because serotonin and melatonin is what stimulates the dreaming, right? Um, so, your, your body is physically compelled to re respond to these chemicals that you've put in. Whereas, you can do the same thing with, with just your awareness. You can just, by choosing to be in communion, right? You, you can, can also do the same thing. That, that bliss, right. that ecstasy. You, you can also do it through, through the breath. Through the breath, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, what, what, what you had questions? Yeah, there's a... Yeah. You got it's some an, questions, Brian? It's, an, it's, an <laughs> it's an infinite amount of questions. <laughs> even, even picking the next question is hard. Um, <clears throat> do, you, um, do you feel as though the trajectory of civilization is A-OK -okay, no, matter, no matter what? Um, do you feel like we need to be focused on something specific geopolitically to get to the oneness so that we don't cause significant errors in existential threats or anything to let more children birth and experience this and etc. You mean do, do we need to get rid of Trump? <laughs> Is that what you're asking? Maybe do we need to get rid of like nuclear weapons? Do we need to Wouldn't get that be great? Yeah. 
Let's do that. Can we agree? Let's do that. Let's hope everyone can. Boom! We're on our way. I think so. We're still here. Even after the Cold War, we're still here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When I was born in 57, man, my father was in the Air Force, right? I was born in an Air Force base. And there's, you know, Def, DEFCON 2 or whatever. We are on, you know, they were on global alert. Yeah. Yeah. Until, what, the 90s? So my whole life, from 1957 until 1991, when the wall fell, we were under threat of like blowing ourselves to smithereens. And for the past, up, up until this year, the past two years since Trump came in, there was no question about the fact that that was, you know, that was taken care of. You know, we were gonna not blow ourselves up. Now we've got somebody in the office that thinks that it's okay. To like, why don't we use those things? We've, we're, we bought all these beautiful weapons. Why don't we use them? You know, that's crazy. But I see that the, you know, this soul, like any other soul, has a mission, right? And there isn't infinite love loves infinitely every soul in existence, right? Even Hitler. You know, these, these, these souls take on these roles for a reason. And they're catalysts. He's certainly been a catalyst. And he's inspired, what has he inspired? He inspired the, the if, there, if he hadn't been elected, there wouldn't have been a women's march the day after he got elected, he got in, stepped into office, right? If he hadn't been elected, those hundred, you know, there are a hundred women, hundred and some odd women have, are now in Congress because of what, of him being elected. And, which is not even half of Congress, but we're we're moving in that direction. I want to return conversation to what is going on in the higher realms, planes of existence. What these intent-driven journeys are to the to this earth orbiting the star and then we remember some some don't but some remember and then we go back to renegotiate where we go next to the next rock orbiting a star not necessarily we go outside of a physical universe maybe to a different style of universe to a different well the first thing that happens is you, you leave the physical dimension, obviously, right? But you don't have to die in order to do that. You can do that in your sleep. You can do that through meditation. You can do it through astral projection. You know, lucid, um, uh, with full lucidity, leaving your body, basically. Here in the physical, you're, you know, grounded in the physical body, grounded in the physical plane. Um, you can communicate when you're out of your body at night or through meditation or whatever, you can communicate with those are, that are in uh, places that are either more dense than this or less dense, less and dense than this. And what is more dense and less dense than this? Than the physical plane? Yeah. There, there, there are places that, that people, that souls create for themselves when they feel that they have um, are, are, are as yet undeserving of um, returning to the one that they they may they may feel like they've done something or or that that would make them unworthy of returning to infinite love, right? And so they create these places to try to punish themselves, right? And those places are just more dense. That's one scenario about places that are denser than here. Um, you know, there's, there's obviously not as much light. They are more dense. The difference, the way to determine, you know, all the different planes and everything, it's all us kind of just drawing lines to infinite consciousness is all one thing, right? 
it, the, the determining factor is density. You know, how dense is it? Right? Obviously, the physical plane is more dense than the etheric and astral and causal planes. Right? What are those? It, it, like I said, it's, it all has to do with, with there are places that are planes of existence that are, that are less dense than the physical plane. Yeah, but what is etheric, astral, and causal? Like I said, the, it, yeah, it, yeah. you know, like... But like, the less like, dense, like, what does like that with mean? A, with a, um, with a, a musical scale, there are certain places, if you have a, um, a guitar string, you know, you have a string that's, that's strung taut, there are certain places where you, if you strum, it's not going to sound very good, right? And there are certain places where if you strum, it's going to sound pretty good, right? You can hold it down and then there's certain places along there that are going to sound perfect, right? And there are certain places that aren't going to sound like anything you want to listen to, right? So each one of these planes is like that. They, there's a coherence that a, a sphere, let's say, or zone, where things make sense to consciousness, you know, to the consciousness that you're, that you're tuned into, all right? So you can, you can look into, um, because there's an aspect of you on each one of these coherent places in the realms of density, you have direct access to those places if you so choose, when as and if it's not going to in, impinge on you accomplishing what it is you came here to do. Look at that. Look, man. Just trying to understand. I know. A, it's, all, a yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot. It's exciting to, to aim to remember. So <laughs> how about, how about, um, <clears throat> Oh, one more thing. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, the uh, the astral plane is where most people go when they die, let's say, right? Um, and most people, when they think about, you know, um, disembodied spirits and interacting with the other realms and all that kind of stuff, they're usually just dealing with the, the etheric and astral planes, right? So. To the astral plane, to those folks on the astral plane, the causal plane is that has the same relationship. You know, it's to them, it's 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 just as you know out there and as hard to uh, or challenging to commune with. You know, it's it's that much of a of a kind of a um, a, a, a step, like in music. You know, the next. Chord. That makes sense. Are you with me? Well, so I remember the guitar analogy with where you can st strum a guitar for at a note that vibrates really well. So you kind of want to live your life like that, right? But also, I don't know yet. I guess okay, when you so strum like your life a, like, like that, like on a you piano, there's a piano over there, right? So um, if you, you you hit all. all Middle C, right? Let's say middle C is a physical plane, right? There's a scale based on on middle C that you know in the middle of the of the piano key. There's 88 keys, and in the middle of it, there's a the C scale, right? So there's C scale below that, and it sounds deeper, right? And there's C scale above that. That sounds higher. So you're going octaves up. Right. Right. Thanks for giving me that word. I was like, I knew this is word yeah, I'm missing yeah. there. Right. So it's a. So this, this is at one octave. The etheric is at another octave. The astral is at another how octave. How do we raise our octaves? Raise them. How do we? How do we go up? How do we bring our consciousness up? Is that the meditation and the one feelings of oneness and Remember, it's important to remember, one, this is just an analogy. Two, there's an aspect of you on every one of those octaves. 
already the same, there. All at the, all same, at the time. same time. All at the same time. Right? So maybe when and I get some time... of the darker feelings, that's the more denser octave. And when you get the lighter feelings, that's the... Uh... Right. And, and so then what do you do with that? <clears throat> right? So you can only... You can only access that if it's your part of your mission to do that. And if doing so is not going to impinge on what it is you came here to do, that you're in this octave to do. But if you if you have the if you feel like you need to, you know, communicate with these higher octaves have at it you know at any time it's your your call whether or not they can will communicate that aspect will communicate back with you is determined whether or not it's gonna mess you up in what you're really trying to do came here to do to the physical plane Does that what, make did, sense? what did you come to the physical plane to do this <clears throat> and what is this what are we doing right this minute it's just aiming to to have a conversation about awakening and oneness. So just the further dissemination of awakening and oneness. Inspiration. I mean, I, towards that. I, I feel similarly. Right. Yeah. 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 I came to... Are we inevitably going towards unity? Or is it inevitable that we get to that, to a, an awakened state for more of the... You realize that it's already there here. is just oneness right yes our and the rest is is illusion it may be tasty illusion but it's still illusion doesn't it doesn't it at times feel like the ignorance is a parasite <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i guess so bro if, if you say so um to you yeah i guess i'm not gonna if that's how you feel, that's cool. Um, ignorance uh, is a... It serves a purpose. Yeah, you were talking about that earlier, yeah. Yeah. That there are, there are, there is an, there are experiences being had here. Um, that are only possible if you are believing that this yeah, is all there is. All there you know? is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that there's a purpose to those, to that those, that th that those experiences being had at this time. Yeah. So so every so everything inherently has okay. purpose. Oh, one more thing. Yeah. And and even if you don't think that, the universe uses everything. Right. The universe to the universe everything is fertilizer. Everything fertilizes everything else. Nothing is wasted. Right. So whether you're aware of it or not, the universe is gonna use whatever you're doing and whatever is happening to its greater purposes. Straight up. To its greater you know, purposes. It, like, like if I died right here, right now, you know, and nobody touched my body, you know, the universe would make my body disappear into the ground eventually. Yeah. You know, microbes would be happy. Yeah. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And I would be fertilizing this spot. Yeah. You know? So, what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? The world? <laughs> yeah. That's usually my answer too, yeah. <laughs> you know, the whole yeah. thing, man. Yeah. It's all freaking, isn't it freaking amazing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, just like, look at that right there. See that airplane? Yeah, it's an incredible. Feet of, you know? You know what? You might like this phrase. Look at that. I call look at it, that. Look, 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 look. I call I call it see a bird make a plane thrown away like a coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> so literally a hundred years ago it was like, oh my gosh, look, we can do that yes. too. Yeah. And then we went through a several decade process of making airplanes and now they're almost 200,000 commercial flights happen a day and you get off the commercial flight and you throw the idea away like a coffee cup. Yeah, really, really. Yeah. And people people get in those things and then they pull down the window. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? You're flying across America. You're not gonna like look out the window? 
I did a lot of, uh, 100, 150 years ago, people were like, you know, got to have a covered wagon, try to get our horse, and people walked across America just to yeah. get to California, man. Yeah, you know? six months, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Half a year. Go ahead, man. Um, what is time? That's a great question. Um, you know, what, what comes to mind is that there's this thing is that, that time is a function of gravity. It's a, you know, it's just something I've, I've, I heard and I'm like, really? I'm, it's something I'm, I'm, it's a, like mental bubble gum, you know what I mean? Just chew that up a little bit. Um, it's all relative, man. Whatever time is, it's definitely relative. Because, you know, th th there's an eternity in every moment. And there's an infinite number of eternities in every moment. You know, depending on your perspective. Or it could be, be just us waiting. Standing in line behind somebody else, waiting for something else to happen. You know? Or, you know, we're having an epiphany. If all of you is happening in all of the different octaves all at once, are you not also happening all at once in all of your ages right now? Exactly. All time is simultaneous. Yeah. The non-linearity of time. Well, see, there's, the, the, once again, it brings us back to, you know, the source of, inf of, of infinite consciousness, right? It knows all there is to know. It is everything there is to, that there is, right? And so, at the moment of the, of the creation, the first moment of the creation, it knew the whole, every scintilla of the creation. And so, in that model, it, to me, it's like, it, the source of infinite consciousness loves to be surprised. Being surprised is like, is like dessert. Yeah. You know what I mean? Surprise me, because I know everything. But try to surprise me, surprise me anyway. And I think that's one of the reasons why humanity, you know, because we surprise ourselves every friggin' day. You know, I mean, I, I surprise myself right now. May not look like it, <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly amazed by. You know, like where I find myself, what I, what I find myself being, doing, so forth. You know, and I, I, I think, what if I'm capable of it, most people are as well. You know, so. Hmm. Look at that. How do you feel? <laughs> How do you feel about exponential technology? Exponential technology? Exponential technology. What, what are we talking about? Just that we now have these incredible computers and phones that are super incredible, better than what was used to get to the moon, helicopters, yeah, you can hear it. Um, biotechnology, neurotechnology, just mapping things out really well in the brain and in the body, the genome sequencing, etc. Mm -hmm. is all just dropping in price and increasing in speed, etc. Yeah. It's wonderful, isn't it? It's freaking amazing. Do you think there are any negative aspects to exponential technology? Right. So positive and negative are on a spectrum okay. of being in existence. Right? Okay. So it's and all we love. Value, it's we all value, love. Even we the value. negative is love. Ultimately, it has to be, right? Because all there is is infinite consciousness. And infinite consciousness is infinite love, right? Continue, but, yeah. But to get a little more specific, there is, um, you know, I'm an astrologer and a student of history, right? I look at the, the big picture. I spend a lot of time. Big history. Credit, big history. Yeah. Yeah. I love big history. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like, I, I, the history of the universe. Exactly. The history of, of yeah. existence. Of civilization. Kind of, and beyond. 100 billion people lived and died to build this world, yeah. Right, right. And so, so it's obvious that there is, um, in 1903, the, the Wright brothers 
flew in Kitty Hawk. And uh, 66 years later, we were walking on the moon. That's pretty great. 66 years. That's pretty now, good. Before, before that. That's actually incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, probably the biggest human accomplishment ever. Right. And, and in so, the fastest time period ever. So the computing power in this, in my hand right now, is more than what landed us on the moon. Yeah, which was 60, almost 66 years ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, ish. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Isn't it credible? It's just, so it's obvious. Okay, okay, all right. So, um, I got you all excited. Yeah, yeah. Population. Yes. Um, up until 1900, around 1900, the human population was under a billion souls incarnate at once. Right? Yeah, it was around that time, yeah. Right. Yeah. Then we had six billion in the last hundred years, yeah. So, yeah. Right now, we're approaching Eight. seven, we're yeah. approaching 7.8 billion, billion souls. Billion souls, yeah. Okay. The, That's how many souls there are. So there's a soul in every person. Right. But there aren't, like, there's not fractaling of souls. Like, there's not one soul being shared across. Of course there souls. is. Oh, there is? Remember, what part of... Oh, yeah. All is one. All is did one. we not forget? Yeah, yeah. Did we, did we forget? So then here? your soul bathes in mine, and mine bathes in yours, and whatnot. The interconnectedness of things. Yeah. Ultimately, we all come from the but one. But there are 7.7 7 plus billion right now souls, and we're approaching 7.8, which is in a harmonic with the base frequency of the Earth, the human resonance, right? What For does the that person. mean? The base frequency of the Earth is 7.8 hertz, right? It's it, caused. Is that by the frequency of the crust, or where? It's a frequency of uh, the planet all overall, based on on um, the three to four thousand lightning strikes that happen every day, cause the frequency of the Earth to you know vibrate at that frequency, seven point eight. Interesting. Cycles per second, right? Which is in a harmonic with the ambient vibration of the universe. The the, the wavelength of the ambient vibration of the universe is is 7.3 sine cosine centimeters right so it's like we're in this for the first time in recorded history uh, the number of incarnate souls is coming into a harmonic with the base frequency of the earth and the ambient vibration of the universe in our lifetime sometime within the next year so but what why why so but no no i said so but i know yeah, i know yeah, i don't I'm know i'm trying to, i'm man. trying to well because i'm trying to understand this so i'm trying to paraphrase it because otherwise i don't think i understand go, 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 it go. so 7.8 billion souls 7.8 hertz frequency of the planet and that is uh, synchronous check it out since the last world destruction around 12,000 years ago to 1900 less than a billion souls at the same time on the planet right world destruction world destruction 12,000 years ago yeah what was the world destruction okay so according to the Hopi oral tradition there have been three previous world destructions in the past hundred thousand years the was first the time asteroid one the first time by fire the second time by ice and the third time by flood right okay the most recent one what, has what was it Hopi Hopi what's Hopi the Hopi are the Native American oh. that that live um, in uh, northeastern Arizona. Okay, okay. Three okay. previous. Yeah. Their oral tradition goes back through three previous world destructions. Okay. And the the most recent one. Damn, they've logged. That's good. That's good lineage. Yeah. 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 But they've had the information now. Yeah. Good. They've had the oral the oral tradition. Okay. Now, it's only been within the past. You might want to know this. Yeah. Uh, in while I was having that spiritual acceleration back in the winter of 1993-94, I discovered an archaeological site in Big Sur that I feel may be connected to the Hopi story of the, of the survivors of the last world purification by flood and their place of emergence into the fourth world. And I, I made a movie about it and you know released it in 2010. Is that on your website? 
Yeah, it's on YouTube and you can watch it for free. It's a 90 minute The website again is D David Alexander English.com. David Alexander English.com. Or DA English.com. DA English.com. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Right. And the link's in the bio. And you have your books there. Yeah. And you have your music, music and, there. And, yeah. and your and paintings. Movie and, and paintings. Yeah, yeah. I discovered this site, the first site, and then over the next um, 20 years, I discovered two more sites within five miles of the of that first site. They're all um, have something to do with celestial observation, celestial observatories. And um, it turns out that they're in the National Forest, and the Forest Service didn't know anything about it until I showed them the photographs of the sites that I took in 2004. And so I made a movie about this whole, the whole thing. For, for ten, the first 10 years afterwards, I, I, after the first initial discovery, I thought that it was common knowledge. I thought that the Forest Service knew about it and that other people knew about it. And I tried to find out what they knew. And then I, it wasn't until 10 years later, I was actually able to talk to the zone archeologist and discovered that they had no idea that the site were there. Were there. And so I made the movie in 20, uh, 2010. And then I made it free. I put it on YouTube in, in, in 2012 and, and published a book version of it. It's a straight transcript. Excuse me. Around that same time, you know, I was working on the sequel to that movie in the book. And all this information started to come out, um, the scientific information, that uh, I, I have been trying to understand what about um, these previous, when did these previous world destructions take place? Yes. In terms of just history and science. Yes. Right? And it turns out that um, around 2012, we discovered when the middle destruction took place. When? Um, about 41,000 years ago. And that was by fire? No. Was the first was by fire, the second by ice, and the third by flood. That was the ice destruction. Right. And um, there were two different scientific um, studies. One was looking at the, uh, the, the Greenland ice cores, and one was looking at the North Sea lava flows. And they both determined that there had been a, a polar shift, a magnetic pole shift, that happened 41,000 years ago. And the oral tradition of the Hopi say that um, when the nephew of the Great Spirit was was ready to purify the world for the second time, he told those to remember the, to keep the tops of their heads open to the rest of the universe to go into the earth and join the ant people for the second time. And once they were safely inside, he told the twins who were stationed at the poles to leave their station. Immediately, the earth rolled over twice, fell off its axis, rolled over twice. The oceans flopped over the land, the mountains fell into the sea and as everything froze Whoa. and the the earth wandered through space for years before um you know starting up its rotation again Whoa. okay so that's crazy that that's, sounds so that, crazy it sounds crazy and yeah. what's amazing about that that oral tradition is that is an eyewitness account of a witnessing a, a magnetic pole shift and then uh, what did how did they retain that through generation if there Oral was tradition, an, brother. if there was an ice age though that killed everyone the ice age didn't kill everyone obviously and um, according to the Hopi the the, the 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 second world I mean excuse me the third world began again after the you know the earth started to rotate again all right and it was a very technological age. So much so that, that there were actually um, what they called shields that flew between cities. That's how technological that age was. And that age was ended by a flood. Okay? So around the same time, around 20, between 2012 and two years ago, this other information, scientific information, came up where they've discovered 
what that there was a flood and when that flood took place. That it, that flood took place between um, 12,900 years ago and 11,600 years ago. And then what was the significance of having just one billion souls and now up to Okay, seven. so after that, after the world was destroyed the third time by flood, you know, it wiped out most of the majority of the population of the world. So right now there are more souls incarnate than there have been in the past since the last world destruction, right? In the past 10,000 or 12,000 years, right? So the, how we got into this part of this conversation was you were asking me about, you know, my take on the exponential growth of technology, yeah. okay? So we are at um, a, a, a place that it, it's obvious that, you know, just in, in that there's a, an exponential growth in population, yep. is an exponential growth in in technology yep. and that all of this is being driven from the other side of the veil okay what does that mean the veil is the the membrane separating the physical universe from the rest of creation and and how is the population growth and technology growth coming from the what the non-physical side of the veil right and it's really simple um, that's where we come from uh -huh. Nobody is here by mistake. Nobody just kind of stumbled into being born, right? Every soul that comes into this life is arrives here through agreement with their higher self, their higher self, and the superconscious beings that are are um, uh, keeping track of the whole soul group, and and um, you know you construct a, a a lifetime as a as a healing or a, as a gift. To the collective consciousness, right? Um, so nobody gets here by mistake. Everybody gets here by agreement and by choice, right? And the only way, like what you said earlier, how many souls did it, how many lifetimes did it take to build up the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure to support 7.8 billion souls being incarnate at the same time? 10,000 years, yeah. 10,000 years yeah. and all and on all these you know all the our ancestors. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What they did created helped to create civilization, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Create enough of a of a physical infrastructure that could support 7.8 billion. 7.8 billion yeah. souls. And yeah. and where did all those souls come from? They came from the other side of the veil. How yeah. do how does somebody get technology? You get it from paying attention to the universe. From you get attention, it yeah. right from from ideas and from, from the ideas. metaphysical realm. And then you can tweak the science because you are uh, you understand the right, rules, the right. laws and, of the and nature. It's all coming from infinite consciousness, right? Being in communion with infinite consciousness, you get an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, that's through how your it feels. dreams, your visions, your thoughts. Yeah, that's how you it know. Feels. Yeah, yeah. Right. So what I'm saying is that all of this is coming from the uh, you know this. There's an agenda that's manifesting. Who's, is it our agenda? Yeah, it's from, all, it, they are we. There's, a, there's just us out it, here. It's our agenda from the higher. Yes, all of us, and, the and, whole and thing. And we, we, we bring our intent here. Right. We're doing this. Do you, do, um, do a quick, <laughs> quick, uh, quick, this one, we gotta, we gotta. Uh, wrap it up. Wrap. So, this universe is designed with math and science and love and consciousness and it's designed with rocks orbiting stars in okay. space. Mm -hmm. What other kinds of universes have you imagined? Have I imagined? Yeah. Uh, it's boundless, bro. It's whatever you want to... What about you though, specifically? What other kind of universes exist out there that may not have green grass, green trees, blue oceans, but rather completely different Dr. Seuss shit? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ask? Because I want, I, I love universe design, and I bet your mind has wandered into some of that. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's boundless. Uh, you know, I, I do. That's what I do all day long. You know, is make stuff up. I'm a professional make stuff upper. You know, professional dreamer. Yeah. You know, that's what I do. So, you know, how many hours in the day? You you, you don't have enough tape. 
<laughs> yeah, the bat. It's the batteries. It's the batteries. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah the batteries, yeah, yeah. man. Well, yeah, because I spent the first half of another interview today. Yeah, yeah, and I still want to cap some B-roll. Um, okay, we'll have to do another episode. When I, uh, I, I'm based in San Francisco, so come when you come and visit, let us know, right. and you can join us in the studio up there. I'll let you know when we come back to LA. David Alexander English, what a fucking pleasure, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Not just a pleasure, a uh, fucking, fucking pleasure. A fucking pleasure, <laughs> my man. Everyone, DA English, check out the links in the bio. Also, go and spur these conversations with other epic people around you. Let's get these conversations rolling. Also, go and build the future, everyone. Go manifest your destiny into the world. We love you so much. As if you could do something else. As if you could do something else. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We love you so yeah. much, and we'll see you soon. Boom. Also, support awesome artists. Yes. Like David English, like Alan Sock and what we're doing here with Simulation. All those links are below. Support artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in, that you want to make a better impact on the world. That's it, baby. That's it. <laughs> much love. We love you so much. Peace. That's Thank it. you. That's Thank it. you very much.